and I am joined by a repeat guest because it's been about a year since Kathy Shanley Hard to believe. has joined us, a longtime association professional who has transitioned into a full-time position as a coach, working a lot with associations, kind of being an unbiased resource for so many associations out there. And it's been about a year since Kathy joined us for an episode. I want to know a lot about what's been going out there, what what's been going on out there and what she's seen in that last year in particular, what are some of the issues that are kind of themes out there in the, in the, um, interworkings of, you know, a lot of these associations and, um, you know, let's just start there. What are you seeing? Yeah. And so two things come to mind right off the bat when you asked me that question immediately was hybrid, right? Mm. So what I'm seeing as a trend is some of the leaders are starting to rethink their policies And they're moving uh, more towards having people in the office more often. And maybe it's not five days a week, but we're seeing a lot of trends away from no days a week. Yeah. And so that's one trend. And so what, what I would share with you is that people are talking about, okay, if you want us in the office, how do we make sure that time in the office is well spent? And what are our underlying reasons for having you there? And, and some of the things that I'm hearing is it has to do with engagement, connectivity, and collaboration. Yeah. And so how do you make sure when you're in the office that people aren't in their offices and instead they're getting together and they're having those valuable conversations? Because you and I know this from when we work together at the yeah. American Neurological Association. That's right. It's those hallway conversations that you have that give you like information that you may not have had and it helps us connect with each other and start to build trust around each other and get to know each other. Yeah, it's a trade-off, right? The serendipitous moments are really what can make you just make your organization thrive. Like, mm-hmm. And it is a matter of being in the office together. And then the cost of that is the commute and it is, it is the fact that you got to, you know, get, get up earlier and do sure. all the, do all those, you know, pre-work things you got to do. Um, but I mean, I work with associations too, and I have these conversations with the people I work with and I am hearing two different things in this hybrid environment. And one of them is, you know, a pop in into someone's office that used to just be like a, a five second thing that you would, you would just go into someone's office and tell them something and, and then they yeah. would go, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. You know, that's becoming an email or a text or something like that. And yeah. sometimes there's a difference in how we read messages versus how they're communicated orally. Like, does that make sense? And sometimes I you think lose you just set me up for my second answer. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that was exactly where I was going. So the second trend is how people are communicating yeah. and how well they're communicating. Yeah. And so one of the things that we we know, I mean, there's tons of data around there, is the importance of being able to hear someone's voice, to read their tone, to look at their facial expressions, to get the meaning behind whatever message is being sent. And so the trend really has to do with how do we support our team to give them the communication skills, both in writing and verbally, yeah. to really connect with each other and get the work done. And I, I love to think of this in terms of when you're writing and you're sending emails, How many of us get that email that says see below and puts the burden on us to read what's going on there instead of someone saying, hey, I've got this really lengthy thing, but here's the one thing you need to know. Or you get an email, uh, you're you're rushed to answer 100 other emails because you're sitting at your desk, you're trying to get your email inbox empty, Mm -hmm. and you just shoot off a response, right? So what's missing from that? Should you be making sure, and the answer is yes, Mm -hmm that you have set yourself up for the best email ever to get a response by giving them context. Why are you writing them? What do you want from them? Here's what they need to know. So those would be my two things that I'm noticing. I agree with that completely. And I'll say one other thing that I've talked with someone who works in association about when it comes to this hybrid conversation is when it is a day in the office and it's like a required day in the office and everyone's there, it can get overwhelming because you're just in back to back to back in person meetings. <clears throat> and that can not, of course, be helpful too. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hearing that as well. So again, they said, think about what the intentions are. Why are people in the office? 
Why are you having a meeting together? Yeah. Um, and do you need to reserve maybe that time for only the meetings where you really need to have people in front of each other as opposed to something where it's, I had a colleague who used to say, is it a job justification meeting where we're just doing a round table of what we did all, every day? Yeah. So, yeah. What about the scenario where like, if you're at home and the other person's at home, you pick up your cell phone and you just dial them and then like you say it real quick to them. Is that, are people like okay with that? I feel like sometimes it's like you see the, your phone light up and you're like, why is this person calling me? Am I in trouble or what is this going to be a big deal? And the person literally just has like two seconds to say something that that just would be way easier to say it on the phone than like type up an email. Yeah. Um, and I know, but there's like that barrier. It's like mentally, like, do I want to call this person? Like, and then there's a missed call and then they might yeah. think, why is there a missed call? You know? Yeah. So would you knock on somebody's door and just walk in when you're physically there? So I like, to say let's use a little bit of um not to be marginalizing what you just said but yeah, yeah. let's use some common sense right okay if you would just walk down the hallway and knock on someone's doors and show up then why can't you just pick up a phone true i will say that one of the things that i do like to think about as a courtesy is if you are calling someone leave a message if they don't pick up and tell them why you're calling true right? so that they aren't wondering why you're calling so and i think the new leave a message has become text like if, sure. if you have a missed call it's a text instead of a voicemail i think that i'm just seeing a lot of people prefer like to just see a text and again i mean that then that, then you get back to the situation where the meaning could be lost in a text where it could be a voicemail so Maybe. It, yeah it is a lot of factors in play a lot of moving parts but i mean it's just i think one thing to take away from this conversation is in the last year or two of course, since COVID, things have gotten a lot more complicated with the communication channels. Yeah. And so the one of the things I love to think about is when I'm planning to have a conversation with someone, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or whether or not it's with a group of people, just really figuring out how do we communicate best with each other. Mm -hmm. And it may depend, right? It may depend on what day of the week it is, if it's early in the morning, or if it's a super difficult conversation, or if it yeah. one there's one that there's just there's nothing you could say that would cause this conversation to go south. Yeah. And then knowing how you usually communicate with somebody. For instance, I know that I had one uh, person that I work with that did really well with they wanted everything in writing with short bulleted points, get to the point, you're done. Mm. I have other people that they like to, you know, like they want to have the appetizer first and then yeah. they want a the little warm up. How yeah. are you doing? How are your kids doing? And then they want it and they like a conversation. So I think about the person I'm talking to mm -hmm. and what's going to get me the outcome I want. And then I frame my conversation, how I communicate based on that. I mean, that is kind of 101 communication there, kind of tailor the message to the audience. Yeah. I think we try to do that in podcasting. You know, we try to have a, a persona and we think about who is on the receiving end of this message. Are we doing a good job reaching that person that we've kind of, you know, identified as our avatar or the, the person we think is listening? Yeah. So I think, I mean, that's huge. Co Communication is always going to be a big one in the association space in all workplaces. But again, I think I'll just underline the complications that have come about since COVID in the hybrid workplaces and just, you know, being able to communicate something you could just do in a hallway conversation is becoming more and more difficult. Now there is an upside to that when you can hire people from all around the country or even world, if you know, global organization, you know, yeah. you're opening up the talent pool. So there is the trade off. I'm not here to just spout doom and gloom, like, hey, when the offices are closed, it doesn't, you know, it's not as good because there's there's a trade off. I keep saying it, but it's like you can you can hire more people, you can open up that pool of people who don't have to just commute. And then of course, you save time when you're not on the road. Yeah. And and as I said, in the very beginning, right? Um, is there a number between five and one that works best mm -hmm. for each organization? Every company is different, right? And yeah. every department within a company is different. So just give yourself some flexibility and be open to having discussions with the team yeah. on what's going to work best for us to do the work that we want to do on behalf of our members uh, I, every day. I, I think table stakes should just be, hey, everyone here understands that trade-off and everyone here under is is trying to make this work and that's why we're seeing a lot yeah. of these hybrid solutions um people understand there's a 
there's a, a double-edged sword here and it's a mixed bag. So, I mean, I, I tip my cap to the organizations that are trying to, to make this work through the hybrid model and, yeah. and, and not just be rigid in one way or the other. And I think a lot of it comes back to trial and error. I think organizations should be open-minded to changing what's not worked, or, or emphasizing what has worked and just being willing to um, say, hey, this isn't set in stone. Yeah, I 100% uh, agree with you. And I have to say, so I know that I work best at 5am. I think you might have been on the receiving end of a few 5am. I am in La La and, Land, yeah. or my son has woken me up and I'm trying to get back to yeah. La La Land. So. And so for hybrid work for me, I could get up, I could be in my pajamas, I could be there with that big old cup of tea. Yeah. And I could be working at 5am when I'm at peak time. <laughs> And hybrid work allowed me to do that, right? Of course. And I'm so. and I'm the opposite way where I can get a boost in the evening time when people have been shut maybe, you know, shut down. And Yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And and it's about understanding how other people work and not being um, not taking it personal if that you don't receive an email back right away because this person is, you know, they're off hours. But then again it is also you need to have some boundaries too, because you can't just be a person that works all the time and is always available to respond to emails because we need to have boundaries. Um, a lot of people working from home just have a, do struggle to find those boundaries. I know anecdotally talking to people, yeah. um, I've heard a lot of like um, hacks and solutions that people have tried to kind of uh, to, to counter the feeling that they're always working because they work from home. Yeah, I would say that is another trend that I have seen. And it's something that I've been hearing for a couple of years now is that I'm not setting appropriate boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the magic questions I love for them to ask themselves is when you say yes to working, when you say yes to answering that email, what are you saying no to? And oftentimes that's a game changer for them. Like, yeah, by sitting in front of this computer and answering these emails, I'm saying no to time with my family, or going to the gym, yeah. or cooking one of my favorite meals, or for people like me, maybe catching a rerun of um, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Okay, or catching <laughs> up important. on or catching up on sleep. Yes, we know the sleep studies out there, and what that what they right. tell us about how you can't make up you know sleep and how important that is. Yeah. yeah, you are you are when you say yes to something, you're you know we only have so many hours in the day. You're saying no to to something yeah. else. Yeah. And the guilt of kind of <laughs> some of that can, can get overwhelming too. And you're just like, you know, what did I do here? So again, it comes back to really thorough decision-making. What are you saying yes to learning how to say no with grace and being, you know, uh, you know, are, are you seeing a lot of people struggling with having meaningful conversations about like saying no and setting up boundaries? Not too much. Yeah. I think it's more of the conversation they're having with themselves. Mm. You know, like I shouldn't be working all of these hours or I feel as if I'm drinking from a fire hose. And then I ask them, and so um, why are you doing it? Yeah. So if you're starting to ask yourself that question, answer the question. Yeah. Um, are people feeling like um, these new work schedules, they're being taken advantage of, do you think? They're... I, you know, I haven't really heard that as much as it seems to be self-imposed mm -hmm. where people want to get the work done, okay. right? And so sometimes it's because there is a lot of work and sometimes it's because they're not delegating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes it's because they're not asking questions. You know, there's so many different reasons, but a lot of it that I'm seeing is self-imposed. Are you? Do you see issues that are only really popping up in the association space and don't really necessarily pop up in other sectors or are these kind of issues just just happening no matter if it's for-profit, non-profit work, whatever. Yeah, so I would say um, associations are super unique in the fact that sometimes you can have two bosses. Mm -hmm. And by mm -hmm. that, I yeah. mean maybe not your formal direct paid supervisor, but from the aspect of you may have a volunteer leader that is someone who you're getting a lot of oh, input yeah, and direction from, outside. and then you have your association management staff person. And so you it has some unique challenges at yeah. times where you have to sometimes balance uh, what maybe a volunteer might want the association to do, would want you to push forward, would want you to be the mouthpiece for something they're believing, oh, yeah. versus always remaining true to the association. And I like to think of it in terms of remember that you are speaking on behalf of all of your members, mm -hmm. uh, not just on behalf of one person. So 
Wow. Yeah. I don't e- Yeah. I, I, that is so unique to associations that, yeah, mm-hmm. you, I mean, you, it, because it, you have to have a conversation, approach a conversation differently with someone who's volunteering their time for the betterment of your organization. Yes. And that does make it a little more nuanced. It does. And, you know, um, I've mostly found in my experience that their heart is in the right place. They're super passionate about what they're talking about. And so then how do you provide uh, information to them to say, like I used to love to say to back it up a little bit. I used to love to say, I know where you want to go. I have a different way to get you there. And that way they know that we're in it together. Yep. Uh, It's just that perhaps their way is maybe not following the process that you have to go through that you know those checks and balance of it has to go through a work group and has to go through a committee and then it has to go through a budget process because uh none of us really like to hear the word no (sighs) so then how do you when you're working with volunteers craft that conversation in a way of hey i know what you want let's figure out a way to get there and it might not be the way you just said but we'll figure it out Kathy, you've been on the show now twice. We've been about a year since we last had you on. Any other final thoughts for us about what you've been seeing out there in the last year or so with associations? I think that's about it. So just, you know, thinking about the fact of with everything that you're doing, think about why you're doing it um, and then come at it with the best of intentions. Kathy Shanley has been our guest Again, on today's episode of Six Degrees of Associations, she is a fantastic resource oh, as part you. of thinkstatus.com. That's her um, leadership and um, coaching group there. So visit thinkstatus.com. We'll put a link into that. And uh, as we do on every episode of Six Degrees of Associations, I will ask, is there someone in your network in the association world that you think we should reach out to and have a conversation with? Yeah, I would talk to Alex Bardock. He is over at AMDA. Uh, Okay. So give him a call. We will talk with Alex. And please stay tuned to our podcast, YouTube, and all the podcast apps And you will hear that conversation with Alex coming up. I look forward to it. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Okay. We'll catch you next time, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye.